today we're going to be talking about order Hemiptera, um, and we're going to go through sort of their families uh, and pinning techniques as well. So Hemiptera is also known as true bugs, and they can usually be identified by their piercing slash sucking mouth parts that are attached to the underside of their head near the front. They also have long segmented antennae with somewhat hardened front wings. Hemiptera literally means half wing, and it refers to the true bugs whose wings have a leathery basal part and a membranous apical portion. Many true bugs resemble beetles in appearance, um, however beetles do not have overlapping wing covers as mentioned in our coleoptera video, and true bugs can have this overlap. Originally there was two subsections of Hemiptera, Homoptera and Heteroptera, however after more genetic studies were done it was seen that not all Homoptera were very closely related, though they did share a common ancestor. Homoptera was then split into three subcategories, and now is mostly used in reference to plant feeding Hemiptera such as aphids and leafhoppers. So the first family we're going to talk about today are the Pentatomidae, also known as the stink bugs. Um, some key characteristics of stink bugs is they have five segmented antennae and three segmented tarsi. I have one right here, so you can kind of see. Little stinky boy. Um, some of them are quite smelly. Stinky boys. Stinky boys. Stinky boys. Since their thoracic glands produce aromatic compounds that are used to repel predators. So the next family we're going to talk about is Ligeidae. Family Ligeidae refers to the family of seed bugs. This family used to be much larger, but was further subdivided into different families. Some key characteristics of family Ligeidae are the sutures on their abdominal sternites, specifically between the second and third sternites. So the suture reaches straight up to the sides of the abdomen. A common seed bug is a milkweed bug, and they can be distinguished by their red and black X-shaped pattern on the back of their wings. The next family we're going to talk about is family Reduvidae, which is also known as the assassin bug. Um, they live up to their names in the sense that they hunt and kill other bugs that are often larger than themselves. One key characteristic of family Reduvidae um, are their tubular mouth parts, known as rostrum. The rostrum comes out at the bottom of their head and is held in a groove in the post sternum. There are ridges within this groove that allows the insect to produce noises when the rostrum is rubbed against these ridges. This is known as stridulation. The next major family is family Scutellaridae, which is the family of shield bugs. They are defined by their shield-shaped body caused by their large scutellum on their back. They also have five segmented antennae. So here is a little Scutellaridae. Scooter. A little scutellum on his back. The next family I'm going to talk about, you may have seen walking on water. This is family Geridae, also known as water striders. Um, so water striders are able to do this, they're able to stride on water, because they can exploit the surface tension of the water with their long mid and hind legs. These legs are covered in a collection of fine hairs, which in contact with water will not saturate. These hairs allow the insect to float above the water. Their forelegs are smaller and more specialized for catching prey. Um, here you can see Geridae. You want to put your yeah. hands up? We've got family Geridae right mm -hmm. here. So you can see those little striders, um, little skinny little legs. The final family is family Choreidae, which refers to leaf footed bugs. And these bugs are characterized by their enlarged and broadened hind tibia, which give a leaf like appearance. So catching Hemiptera is actually not that hard because a lot of them like to just hang out on the leaves and vegetation. Specifically on like goldenrod? No. There are often the noise. little buggies the noise. having sexual Sammy, intercourse. No <laughs> Coitus. So catching Hemiptera is actually not that hard because a lot of them like to just hang out on the leaves and vegetation. So you can basically just sneak up behind them, pluck them off, drop them in your 70% ethanol. That's it. And they can be preserved in there for years, or you can choose to pin them um, if you want to do that. To catch Geridae, uh, so the water striders, we just used sort of shallow nets that you can skim across the surface. They're kind of fast though, so you have to be like really quick to just get it. Um, another really cool technique on how to catch them. We love this. We love this. The pooter. <laughs> so basically, what the pooter is, um, so if you see one, Oftentimes you can catch them coitling on a, on a leaf. You can go up behind them. I'd suck, and they're just like... And there's a little, um, little filter thing here so that it won't go up into your mouth. Mm -hmm. And you can just go around pooting all day. Love pooting. Love to poot. Love pooting. Would right. poot. Thanks for watching. Keep pooting. <laughs>